Not Cure folks. I'm so happy to be here with you live today. I hope you all, Americans anyway, had a great Labor Day weekend. We have some international people joining us as well, so I'm really looking forward to having this really beautiful community of people who are really ready to overcome burnout and reinvent their lives and reimagine what's possible for them. I'm looking here, it looked like I'm a unicorn. That's actually the Eiffel Tower, so I'm gonna move over here so we can see it a little bit. Um, so today I thought that I wanted to talk with you guys about coming off of autopilot. And the reason this is so important is because when you're in burnout, when you're exhausted, when you're in overwhelm, one of the things that can happen is that you sort of shut down your awareness of what's going on from moment to moment. And that's what's called being on autopilot. The way you can tell you're on autopilot are things like this, like if you've ever been driving someplace and you've arrived at your destination and you look around and you're like, I have no idea how I just got here. Or if you're eating something and all of a sudden you look down at your plate and everything on your plate is finished and you don't remember eating it, right? Have you ever done that? Because I have. I used to do that a lot when I was driving, when I was in my grad, when, when I was in graduate school and I'd get, don't tell anybody this, don't judge me, I'd get McDonald's. I was in graduate school, like what did I know? But I'd get McDonald's and I'd reach into my bag for my quarter pounder with cheese and it would be gone. And I'd be like, dude, like they didn't give me my quarter pounder with cheese. Well, in fact, they had and I had already inhaled it um, within about, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds or a minute of having purchased it and then forgot about it. So that's what I mean by being on autopilot. The reason we want to come off autopilot, especially when we're recovering from burnout or wanting to prevent burnout in the future, is because when you're in the present moment, when you're paying attention on purpose, open-heartedly and non-judgmentally, you have so many more choices in the world. You have so many more awarenesses of opportunities that are right in front of you that you have no idea about when you're on autopilot. It's like when you're on autopilot, you're walking around like you've got blinders on. And what mindfulness does is it brings you into the present moment and it helps you become aware of not just what you're tolerating, not just what you're settling for, which is what we talked about in our first, our first module, but it really helps you even clearly understand what your physical body needs right now. You know, some of the people that I work with in my private coaching programs will tell me, they're like, I don't even know when I have to go to the bathroom until I'm running for the bathroom. And these are like 50 year old women who are doing this. This isn't like little kids. So what mindfulness does, it helps you be more aware of what your physical body needs. It helps you be more aware of opportunities that are right here in front of you right now that could open a door to a new opportunity for your life if you were just aware of it. But unfortunately, stress, especially chronic stress, lack of sleep, right, lack of self-care can sort of impede that process of being aware of what's going on around you. So today in your bonus training, what I want to teach you is how to pay attention on purpose, how to come off mind, how to come off autopilot and come into this place of being very, very connected with where you are right now. And I'd love to know who that one viewer is who's watching our session today. Can you give me some likes and, and tell me who's here watching? I'm going to take a sip while I wait. If you can, if not, that's okay too. You can tell me later. Just give me some likes anyway. Okay, so the way that I teach mindfulness practices, and by the way, I, hey Megan, <laughs> I love that you're here. The way that I, it always helps me too guys to let me know that you're here and that you're watching so that I can actually talk to you and have a conversation with you as we go through this. So the way that I teach mindfulness comes from my training and education in mindfulness practices that I did in my postdoc at the University of Missouri where I studied mindfulness practices and student health. Hey Ida, you're getting all Robin all day today, you guys. I'm so happy to be here with you. So this mindfulness practice really came out of really me wanting to help my patients understand how they could feel better as fast as possible without the use of medication, if at all possible. So I just wanna take you through a very quick med um, <clears throat> excuse me, meditation practice so that you can start implementing in, 
in your day as well. And the way that I do that is I just teach a concentration practice. If you're familiar with this, it'll be a good reminder if this is new to you, um, I'm happy to introduce this to you. So the way that we do a concentration practice is, and as you're listening to this, I want you to just sit up straight in your chairs. And take a breath in and let it go. And as you do, I want you to just place your hands in your lap. Just really, just really being very present with what's happening right here, right now for you. So notice your fingertips on your lap. Notice your feet. Hey Leslie, we're doing mindfulness practice. Glad you could join us. Just notice your feet on the ground. Move your toes around in your shoes a little bit. And then maybe just even just briefly just give yourself a stretch. And even this, you can start to feel this, even this starts to bring you out of autopilot and back into what's going on in the present moment right now. So take a breath in and let it go. And I'm gonna close my eyes and you guys can close your eyes too. It just helps me stay focused on what I'm doing here. So take a breath in and let it go. And then take another big deep breath in and let that one go too. And as you do, you might even notice the rise and fall of your breath. Breathing in and out. And your only job right here is to notice when you're breathing in and to notice when you're breathing out. That's it. And because this is a concentration practice, it's always good to have something to focus on. So for our purposes today, you should take a breath in. And as you do, you're gonna notice a little cool patch of air right around the edges of your nostrils. <clears throat> So breathe in and notice that and breathe out and you might be able to pick up on a sense of the breath leaving the nostrils as well. But as you breathe in and as you breathe out, you can bring your attention and your focus, your inner vision, right around this little patch of air right around the edges of your nostrils. And you can just look there, look there with your inner eye, focus there. And then when your mind wanders, which it will inevitably do, your only job right here right now is to bring your attention back to that cool patch of air right around the edges of your nostrils. That's it. You breathe in and you breathe out and you know when you're breathing in and you know when you're breathing out and that's it so that's your concentration practice you can go ahead and open your eyes and in the comments what I want you to do first is just tell me what you noticed during that practice you know sometimes people when they do a concentration practice like that they get this immediate sense of relief like they feel a little bit more relaxed and one of the things that I want you guys to really get about mindfulness practices is that relaxation, relief, calmness, those sorts of experiences are actually side effects of the practice itself. They're not an intentional outcome of the practice. And otherwise, you don't sit down to meditate <clears throat> in order to become more relaxed. In fact, a lot of times, especially when you're just at the beginning stages of this, you can sit down, and I was even noticing this today, I've been kind of running around this morning and I was feeling a little bit squirrely while I was meditating with you. And so I had to notice that the act of meditation is an act of noticing. That's all it is. The act of mindfulness is just paying attention to what is without having to change it. Without having to change it. Right, so Megan says she, you notice that you're having some clenching in your chest that you've been holding on since a challenging conversation with a client and then relaxed from there. Right, it's a side effect to relax, but you don't sit down to meditate in order to relax. You sit down to meditate just like you go to exercise or you do your sit-ups or you do your push-ups or whatever it is to build strong muscles. 
the meditation practice, focusing on the breath, the concentration practice, actually helps you retrain your brain. It's like doing push-ups for your prefrontal cortex. So that's why you do it, okay? So just the act of meditation begins to change the structure and function of the brain, which is really cool. The side effect is sometimes that I got more relaxed. Did anyone else feel more relaxed? Give me some hearts or likes if you did. And then if you had a different experience from relaxation, what was that experience? And if it was the opposite of that, like for me, it was. I was noticing that I was really squirrely because I've got a lot going on right now. And Ida says that I sat down and experienced some decreased tension in my back. So you noticed. So the first piece of that, Ida, as you know, is just noticing the tension. And then you noticed as you sat and breathed, the tension was relieved. So those are acts of mindfulness. That's mindfulness. Relaxation, the release of tension, that's not mindfulness. That's just a side effect. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, great. All right. So the practice today, you know, at some point I want to give you guys a formal meditation practice where you can sit on a cushion and you can have your meditation area like I have set up in my bedroom. And I'll show you that at some point. But for right now, just to integrate mindfulness into your daily life with everything that's going on. You know, Leslie, I know you've got your kids and you've got your work and you're driving and you're doing all these different things and everybody in this group is actually. What I want you to do is just pick out a time in the day, like, or five times in the day actually, where you can take five deep mindful breaths. So. A lot of times, when I was driving back and forth to ASU, when I was working as a professor, when I was in the middle of Missouri, driving back and forth between Missouri and Kansas for whatever I was doing, when I would get in my car and put my hands on the steering wheel, that would be my opportunity to take five deep breaths. Just breathe. We're breathing anyway. You may as well just pay attention to your breath while you do it. It doesn't take you any more time. What it does is take attention, right? So coming off of autopilot requires you to shift your attention from those 79 things that you've going on, got going on in your head to being really present. My hands are on the steering wheel right now. I'm gonna take five deep breaths. And by the way, guys, you might only get like two deep breaths before your mind jets off into, you know, where, you know, next Tuesday or last Wednesday or wherever it was. But the idea here is that every time that happens, you notice that it has happened. I wish you could see what I'm doing here. You notice that it would happen. And then you bring, it, bring your attention back to the breath. That's your mindfulness practice right now. It's called a concentration practice. You just breathe in and you breathe out and you know when you're breathing in and you know when you're breathing out. Does that make sense, guys? Give me some likes and hearts. And I'm gonna open it up for Q&A just for a couple of minutes. What questions do you have around stress management, around anything I've talked about today with mindfulness practices? What questions or what, what's a different way of asking that? What's your number one takeaway? Either a new question or what's your number one takeaway from this training today? Ida's number one takeaway is be present. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Ida, listen, we're all, we're, highly creative people tend to be more scattered. We tend to have a little bit of ADHD going on. We've got, a, you know, there's just a lot of stuff and a lot of balls that you're juggling. So this practice actually just helps you to just come back to the present moment. And this is where all your creativity is anyway. This I am is in the present moment. I am is where your point of power is. I am is where all of your creativity is. And to get to I am, you've got to be present. And we're going to talk more about I am in our next module next week, and I'm looking forward to doing that. In the meantime, what I'm going to invite you guys to do is practice. Choose five times during the day. Maybe it's when you put your hands on the steering wheel. Maybe it's when you lay down to go to bed at night. I don't care when it is, but choose five times. 
and set your timer on your clock or set an alarm on your on your phone, sorry, set an alarm on your phone to remind you to take five deep mindful breaths. And that's it. That's your only homework. Okay? All right, I will see you guys in a week for our regular module training session, and I'm going to pop back in here and see how everybody's doing from time to time this week, too. All right, love you guys. See you later.